All right, so we did the ocular motor stuff. We did the um, the near far. We we looked at how you know how her eyes working together and uh, doing ocular motor. So now what? Let's do treatment. Okay, so basically when I talk to my patients, I typically say, okay, we're going to work together once a week for the next, let's say, ten weeks. And I just say ten because it's a round number. And it seems not too scary for most of them to hear. And so typically my plan then is to do, okay, I'm going to go five weeks of therapy and then around five or six, we'll reevaluate, see what's gotten better, what's not changed. They might see the eye doctor again at that time. Um, we'll reevaluate our goals and then continue on for 10. Most of my patients I see for about eight to 12 visits, I would say is my average here at the concussion center that I work in. Um, true vision therapy, um, can be a lot longer than that. So that that's very different. Um, certainly. And there's so many more things that can be done. I have a strong proponent that anyone can benefit from therapy for vision. I think it's something that everyone can do and, and, and improve their skills on. Uh, but in this, in this setting, this is kind of what my, my mindset is. I'm trying to keep it short because we're trying to get this person back to working back to school as functional as they can be because they need to continue life. And if vision therapy is something they need to continue, they certainly can do that um, once they're discharged from our care. So my visit one through three is really focused on helping them to feel more comfortable with the visual activity as a whole. So doing their own activities. So when I do the smooth pursuit and Sakai, they're usually uncomfortable. They're pulling away. They don't, they don't like that. They've been avoiding it for so long and now I'm putting it right in their face. So I really want them to do it on their, on their own so that they have more control over the actual activity. Thereby, I'm, I'm establishing that trust. I'm encouraging them to build tolerance to doing these things that they maybe have been avoiding because it makes them feel uncomfortable. So I focus on education and kind of self-led, simple ocular motor exercises where they're comfortable. So um, this is a repeat slide, but basically I have her do these on her own, okay? Um, if, if these targets are too small or if they're doubling or if they're, um, you know, she doesn't like that, I have to use, I even use um, highlighters with a big highlighter top on the top. So let's say it's a yellow highlighter and I put a green top on it. So it's a big fat object for her to look at and she can initially hold it far away if she wants to. Um, that might be more comfortable for her initially but eventually I'd like her to kind of bring it into that reading distance. So we're kind of working on those um, near point activities. So um, I won't go through the videos again, but that's what that we did there. Um, again, I have her doing that near far shift. So maybe that first visit, I'll talk to her about what her, her um, performance looked like on the assessment. And then for her homework that week, I'm going to have her do her own ocular motor exercises. Teach her to do smooth pursuits and saccades. And then also just a very, very simple near and far visual shift to make sure that we're getting that consistent physiologic diplopia. And in her case, because she had a little suppression, occasionally she didn't see two of what she was supposed to be not looking at, okay? So this is a good, simple exercise that you can do. It's similar to a pencil push-up, but I don't typically do that er that early on because this is uncomfortable and, and too much for the patient. So I just do a simple version of the pencil push-up where I have them hold something large. So I'm gonna just go and grab this because it's easier. So I have my highlighter here with the blue top and I have her looking at that and she's gonna switch back and forth between the blue top to the pink, per pink paper on the wall. So that's an example here. And then um, this video is her telling me that. So I'm asking her, look at the paper. How many papers do you see? One. How many of the red balls do you see? Two. Going back to the red ball and repeat, repeat, if that makes any sense. So this is a very simple exercise that you can give in writing for them to do on their own, maybe seated in a chair where they're comfortable and they can keep trying that on their own in the week between when I saw them, saw her first to now. Okay, so um, door jams. This is another example of something that I do. Um, very simple. I use this one quite often early on. So I use kind of strips of paper, whether it be like a strip of nine letters or these little squares here in this picture. And I put them the width of a door, so door jams, and I have them kind of in that two by two pattern. 
So here we're just going to improve the eye's ability to aim from one fixed point to another and add in a little bit of can you keep your place when you're moving from one fixed point to the other? Or do you skip a line? Do you lose your place? Is that difficult? And so I give them this usually the first or second visit because it's far away from them. They feel comfortable. It's not up in their face. And they can do a very simple visual tracking activity at home. That paper on the left is a literal snapshot of my handout that I give to my patients. I explain very simple with large print what we're doing here. Down at number five, I include a metronome option or they can do this activity with the beats of metronome. My plan is to increase those beats of metronome from where they're comfortable. So typically around 80 beats per minute would be pretty average and have them work up to maybe 120. And I typically say, okay, don't go from 80 to 81 beats per minute. That makes no difference. You're not going to feel any change. Let's go from 80 to 85, 90, 95, and see if you can work up to 120. Maybe not in that first week, but that's our end goal. Okay? Okay, I'm going to speed through these two. Wall clock. So sometimes just doing the simple um, tracking and visual motor activities with the pens and papers this is too much for the patient. So I might try something a little bit larger. So here I have her standing in front of a wall and she's pretty close to the wall because it wouldn't fit in the picture, but um, keep in mind, this is kind of just to fit in this, this video. These, um, I took some post-it notes, put it in a little clock formation and then having her use a pen light in her hand to move from the pink paper in the middle to the number back to the paper. So number, back to the paper. I'm calling out the number. So she's going nine, center, four, center, five, center, 11, center. And so she's having to move the red light with her hand, but also with her eyes to guide that movement. Um, and that's how she can do that at home. If you don't have a red light, that's fine. She can do that same thing with her eyes, just you calling out what numbers or her doing that on her own. And she can do that at home as well. 